Hey everyone, happy Wednesday. We're coming to you live from the Fossil Cartel for our weekly Wednesday series where we get to share with you information that we normally share with people in the store. Actually, sometimes we go even further and share more information than we'd normally share, as in my previous post the last few weeks about how I got into this. A lot of people ask me that all the time, but in the store I give them the short answer. And on the Facebook Live series, I gave you guys the long answer. So in case you're curious about that, you can check that out. Uh, before that, we did a weekly series about all the different chakras. That's really interesting too. We went in depth about that and what stones would be good for helping clear or boost the different chakras. So check that out if you want and get a chance. Um, so I am very sad and I know everybody else is really sad about what's happening in Houston and uh, I just want to have us maybe take a couple of seconds here and send them some love and prayers. Um, I have a great stone for love here, it's rose quartz and a great stone for communication, it's aquamarine. So I'm going to hold one in one hand and one in the other. And if you would please join me and just let's close our eyes for a couple of seconds and just send everyone there and everyone who's helping out, rescuing people, send them our love and our prayers. Thank you. And um, for those of you who are interested in the healing properties of stones, we also carry a bunch of different pouches that are good for different purposes. And for people that are going through a lot of grief and anxiety, what they must be going through in Houston, we have these stones for grief pouches and these stones for anxiety healing stones. So if you know of anybody that needs some, we got them. So, to, to, oh, I wanted to give you some updates before I go on to share with you what I have information-wise for you today. Um, Labor Day hours were open from 11 to 6 on Monday, and I'm going to be going on a buying trip. It's my second largest buying trip of the year, and so I'll be leaving September 12th, and if you need anything that we don't already have, you can let me know, and I'll try to find it for you. And I will be coming to you live from the show in Denver. Uh, in two weeks, so stay, stay tuned for that. I also wanted to let you know we got some new case lighting in the store and it looks fantastic. Oh my gosh, we should have done this a long time ago. I want to thank my husband Kent for installing them and for purchasing them. Uh, so if you get a chance, come on by and check it out. It's, it makes the rocks shine even brighter. So today I wanted to share with you about Thunder Eggs because we got in amazing variety of thunder eggs, the most amount of different kinds of thunder eggs that we've ever had in the store. Um, a lot of people don't realize there's all these different kinds of thunder eggs depending on which mines they came out of. A lot of people confuse thunder eggs with agate geodes, so I want to set you straight, <laughs> know the difference. So an agate geode is hollow inside. Now thunder eggs can sometimes be hollow inside, but they're not usually. They're usually solid inside. And they both form around aga, I mean, uh, gas bubbles in lava flow. But with thunder eggs, water entered into the bubble and filled it in with silicates, usually agate, uh, sometimes common opal. Hi, Diva. <laughs> um, I'm going to show you a bunch of different examples. Um, and I'll show you more in a little bit. But for now, uh, this is a typical thunder egg. This is from Richardson's Ranch, and you could go there and dig them yourself. Now, this one was cut and polished, so you'd have to go that, through that process if you wanted it to look like this. But now, this one technically is a geode because it's got a little pocket of crystal in there. And then this one's all filled with agate. And then I have one here that's filled with agate and common opal. So whenever you see the white opaque, it's common opal. That's another one from Richardson's. And in a bit, I'm going to take you to our display. I just, Maddie's been working on the display and I didn't want to mess it up. So I'll just take you over there in a little bit. But meanwhile, thunder, I mean, agate geodes. So a typical agate geode looks like this. These are from Brazil. They're really, really pretty. Different color agate. This one's got blue. This one's got some beiges and it's got, uh, Oh, thank you, Diva. 
I have to remember to talk about that. Um, it's got a white border around the pocket there. It's really pretty. And of course, these have been cut and polished too. And then this one, also from Brazil, this one's got amethyst inside. It's filled with purple quartz, which is amethyst. And then we have some from Morocco that are crack your own geodes, where you could take it home and crack it open. Now, this is what it looks like before you crack it. And it's kind of interesting because, you know, if you're digging for these, you might not realize that there's crystals in this rock. You can't really tell from the outside. But what you want to look for, if you're ever digging for these, is a roundish rock. And if it's a geode, it's going to be hollow, which means it'll be lighter than normal. Now, the thunder eggs, because they're filled in in the middle, are not lighter, so you can't tell. Anyway, when you crack those open, they have really pretty white, sparkly, <laughs> sparkly crystals inside. These are from Morocco. You can also get some crack your owns from Mexico, too. And then there's these agate geodes from Dugway, Utah, called Dugway geodes. And they're super, super pretty. They've generally got this bluish crystal in the inside. It's quartz, but it's bluish quartz. And uh, a brown with a banding on the outside. I think it's a rhyolite. Oh, and that's what's around the thunder eggs, too, by the way. Yeah. The stone surrounding the, the agate is uh, rhyolite in there. And here's a big uh, Brazilian geode that was sliced. And you can see there's the pocket and the crystals. But they cut this, so it's just a slab or a slice. And they're really pretty when you put it in the window and the light comes through. We also sell lighted stands. You could put them on, too. And then we've got these little itty-bitty geodes from uh, Brazil. They're called ocos, which means hollow in Portuguese. These are called ocos. Now these are, here's another oco. And they have this kind of like lacy looking border around it. And then in the ocos, I found these miniature geodes. These are like normal geodes, but miniature, not normal ocos. And then we have them in jewelry too. So this is an oco pendant with a quartz crystal in the middle. These are really cool. Rhyolite is brown with some green, right? Um, rhyolite actually comes in all different colors. It's, it's bizarre. It's one of those wild stones. Now, there's a rhyolite from Australia that Devo was asking me. That's why I started talking about rhyolite, in case you're interested, wondering. Um, there's this rainforest jasper rhyolite from Australia that's a different greens, and then there's definitely brown rhyolite. There was this stuff coming out of Mexico, which was all different colors and spotted from rhyolite. Rhyolite really varies. So we have the, um, we have the Oco slice, slices and pendants. Some are plated in silver and some are plated in gold, and these are only $12. And then we have a bunch with the points, like the one I'm wearing. This one's got quartz in the middle. These are all $16. This one's got citrine, citrine in the middle. Here's a couple with amethyst, amethyst in the middle. They're, they're one of our best sellers. They're really popular. The only thing is um, you have to wear them high up because if you wear them low on a low cord, Half the time they'll bang against something, they'll break. They're kind of fragile. We also have the Ocos in earrings as well. And these are $24. Thanks, Diva. And then I just wanted to show you this limb cast. Now, a limb cast is when the wood, instead of petrifying, got replaced by agate. So this is an agatized branch. But it's got a pocket, so whenever you see a hollow pocket like that, technically that's a geode because there was a gas bubble that made that bubble, that pocket. Okay, so now I'm going to walk you over to the uh, Thunder Egg display. Let's see, I'm going to flip the camera around, so bear with me. See if I could do this. There we go. Okay, so hang on. I'm going to take this off of the, off of the stand. Hopefully I'm not going to mess this up. Okay, here we go. 
Maddie's showing some people right now. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, here's some like regular thunder eggs. This one in the middle is different. That one comes from, uh, I believe, Desolation Flats. And then here's a really pretty one with some browns and blues in there. That's a different location. I think this one, oh no, that's Desolation Flats too. Uh, this one's really pretty. It's got a star pattern. A lot of times the, the thunder eggs have a star pattern. Oh, and I think I forgot to mention, this is our state rock, the state rock of Oregon. But you can find thunder eggs around the world, but these are particular to Oregon. Um, here's a really different one with some banding and a pink peach middle. Some of them have uh, like a red moss agate inside. The, this kind... Um, is different with the whitish around it, the white border, as well as this one. I think this one's a killer green bed one. There's so many different mines. Um, this one is really pretty. I don't have the writing on what it is. Um, let's see. Oh, I love this one. Looks like, it reminds me of lakes, little lakes and tributaries in there. Oh, this one's really pretty. It's got a little geode pocket with crystal and some moss around it. Not, now, it's not real moss, by the way. Moss agate does not have real moss in it. It just looks like moss. That's why they call it that. And then I'm going to walk you over to our Oregon section because I want to show you a Buchanan thunder egg. That's a Buchanan thunder egg. It has white around And the one up there in the corner, it's got a white border around it. That one's really cool, too. And last, oh, and we have little ones. If you ever need little gifts from Oregon, they make great gifts. And of course, we always have the little write-ups that come with them. And then last but not least, um, I wanted to show you the uh, amethyst geodes. Amethyst cathedrals, those are also technically a geode. The big one looks like a dolphin. <laughs> um, and then these gigantic ones. Now, th this was a pear. This is a pear. It was cut from one one rock and years ago I got to go to the mines in Brazil they dig them away from rock bed walls in hillsides they dig tunnels into the hillsides and they chisel them away from the rock bed walls first they'll dig a hole um, they'll chip away a hole and put a flashlight in there to make sure there's something in there worth digging out and then they take them out they cut them open they hose them down clean them up and they're just amazing. These, these are really tall. Let's see, they're almost up to my chest. <laughs> and we have some other ones around the store. There's like heads of longer geodes that we just have the top of. Here's a, a citrine cathedral geode. Now this kind of citrine, maybe some of you know, this is actually heated amethyst. It's not naturally natural citrine. Natural citrine is really rare. Uh, it's rare and it's usually very pale, not this dark orange type stuff. So anyway, that's what I wanted to share with you today. Say hi to Maddie. <laughs> and there's Corbin over there helping people. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.